I met Paul, said, do you want to join me band, you know? And then George joined. And then Ringo joined. We were just a band who made it very, very big, that's all. Hello, my name is Scott, and welcome to Digger Podcast. In this show, I take an in-depth look behind each and every song of the greatest band that is, was, and ever will be, The Beatles. In this season, Season 3, I will explore The Beatles' third album released in the US, entitled The Beatles' Second Album. Although this is The Beatles' third album, this is the second album released on the Capitol Records label, hence the name. Capitol Records issued The Beatles' second album on the 10th of April 1964, and it topped the US charts on the 2nd of May 1964 on its second week of release replacing Meet the Beatles. This is the first time an artist replaced itself at the number one spot in America. Let's continue our musical journey with track four from the album Five, four, three, two, one. Devil in Her Heart Because there are a lot of record companies in America Lots of records seemed only to be distributed on a local basis. However, many of the small companies were affiliated with major labels that had distribution in the UK. So some obscure American records ended up being sold in the UK, but unknown in America. This explanation by George Harrison sheds a considerable light on how an extremely obscure song like Devil in Her Heart ended up on a million-selling British and American album. This song was originally titled Devil in His Heart and recorded by a young girl group out of Hamtramck, Michigan called The Donnays. The record, the only one recorded by the group, was released on the local Detroit label Correct Tone Labels in mid-1962. This small company, as George Harrison explained earlier, had an affiliation with a larger record label from New York, Brent Records, who picked up the record for national distribution. Although its flip side, Bad Boy, received substantial airplay in the Michigan area, the single missed the US charts. The single did get picked up by the UK label Oriole Records and was released there. Brian Epstein had had the policy at NEMS of buying at least one copy of every record that was released, Harrison continues. Consequently, he had records that weren't hits in Britain, weren't even hits in America. Before we would go into a gig, we'd meet up in the record store after it had shut, and we'd search the racks like ferrets to see what new ones were there. Devil in Her Heart and Barrett Strong's Money were records that we picked up on, and played in the shop and thought they were interesting. Beatles discovered the record in October of 1962 and shortly thereafter incorporated it into their live performances. Songwriting History (laughs) The Danaes were originally a five-piece singing group who were friends from school. His members were Janice Gwynn, her sister Army Gwynn, Yvonne Singleton, Michelle Ray, and Mary, last name unknown. We were discovered at a high school talent show, Sam Tranked High, released Janice Gwynn. The song was Please Mr. Postman. Having acquired managers, they were booked as local performers, one notable show being the 20 Grand Club in Detroit. According to our managers, after this performance, Barry Gordy was interested in signing us up with Motown. However, they decided to go with Correct Tone Studios. Richard Bryan Drapkin was a songwriter, recording artist originating in the Detroit area. He worked in conjunction with one of many up-and-coming record labels coming out of that area, Correct Tone Records. His professional songwriting career spans from the time of Devil in His Heart, 1962, through till the mid-1970s. 
His songs were covered by R&B soul artists such as Eddie Kendricks, That's All A Behind You, The Spinners, as well as The Supremes and Four Tops. Together we can make such sweet music. Larry Santos, Now That I've Found You, Spanky Wilson, I Think I'm Gonna Cry, and Barbara Lewis, That's The Way I Like It. Rich's recording career began under the alias Ricky D. Recording If That's What Makes You Glad on Big Sound Records in 1965, among others. The Correct Turn Records label was launched in March 1962 with a single entitled Let Me Be Your Boy by an up and coming 21 year old R&B singer named Wilson Pickett. Shortly thereafter, the Danaes were added to the roster. With the departure of Mary, the group was now a quartet. There was only one more change to be made. My sister Army Gwyn was the lead singer in the group when we were discovered, continues Janice Gwyn. However, Yvonne Singleton was the lead singer on our record. With this personnel change decided, they were ushered into the recording studio to record two songs that Richard Drapkin wrote specifically for them. Bad Boy and Devil in His Heart. We recorded another song called You Always Talk About Me Tomorrow, Janice recalls. However, it has never been released because the group broke up. After its initial release on the Correct Tone label, the single was picked up by a New York record label, Brent Records, and was released on August 6th, 1962. It seemed that another successful girl group had been born. Bad Boy was being played a lot, and they were talking about travelling, Yvonne relates. The mothers wanted the girls to go to college. Michelle's mother was leery about the music world, so they dropped out. Donay's member, Janice Gwynn, explains, I was the youngest in the group, 15, and still in high school. My parents were interested in our education, so my sister and I dropped out of the group. I finished the school and my sister moved to California to ascend school out there. Michelle Ray also dropped out of the group to further her education, which overleft Yvonne, who stayed with correct tone for a while. So ended the history of the Danaes after only one single release. Although the record did not chart in the US, Oriole Records in Britain picked up the single for release overseas. If it weren't for Brian Epstein buying a copy of the single for his NEMS store, the Beatles wouldn't have stumbled upon it and liked it enough to work up a rendition of it, thereby making it the most successful song in the Richard Drapkin songwriting catalogue. Yvonne Singleton continued her career with Correct Tone, releasing three singles under the name Yvonne Fernie, including the highly acclaimed Tony Clark song, Just Like You Did Me. After retiring from the music business shortly thereafter, she was recruited to join the Motown group, the Elgins, in 1971, and toured Britain during a brief resurge of popularity there. Unfortunately, we never received any royalties for the song that was released on the Beatles album, Janice concludes. We didn't even know they recorded the song until one morning my sister Amory and I were watching the Beatles cartoons on television and heard the song Devil in Her Heart. Boy, were we shocked. While Devil in His Heart by the Danaes may never have been a hit anywhere, it had been sought after record for decades because of the Beatles version. It began to pop up in reissues in the 1980s and can now be found on compilation discs such as the 2000 Ace release Rockin' on Broadway The Time Brent Shad Story Recording History <laughs> Having just recorded Devil in Our Heart for the BBC radio show Pop Goes the Beatles two days earlier July 16th 1963 the Beatles thought the song would be a good contender for possible inclusion on their second album, 
as they entered EMI Studio 2 on July 18th, which was their first day of recording for the album. This evening session, which ran from 7 to 10.45pm, commenced with the starting and completing You Really Got a Hold on Me, and then laying the groundwork for money, that's what I want. At approximately 9, they began work on Devil in Her Heart, as their third song of the evening. Three live takes that were made of the complete song, all four members playing their usual instruments with all lead and background singing. Take three was deemed the best. Three overdubs were then performed on top of take three, which included extra guitar flourishes from George Harrison, double track lead vocals during the verses, and Ringo playing maracas. This brought the song to take 6, which completed the song as we hear it today. The song was finished by approximately 10pm, which freed them up to attempt recording the ballad till there was you, although they ultimately left this for another time. The monomix of the song from take 6 was performed on August 21st 1963, as with the rest of the album that was completed at this point. Only producer George Martin and engineers Norman Smith and Jeff Emmerich were present for this session. The stereo mix was made on October 30th along with the rest of the album in a quick three hour session by the same three recording personnel along with the unnamed BT. July 7th 1969 saw the Beatles return to the song in Twickenham Film Studios during their rehearsals for the Get Back Let It Be film. This was a brief impromptu run through, only done because the song they were rehearsing at the time, Don't Let Me Down, featured George Harrison playing guitar work that was similarly phrased to what he did on Devil in Her Heart. It therefore reminded them of the song and they reminisced. Thanks for listening to Dig a Podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast on Spreaker. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other podcasting platform. This has been a Team Wilgo production. Until next time, if you know what I mean. Do I did? No? Okay.